Some years ago, a legendary manga creator took on what should be an impossible task. This particular creator, Naoki Urasawa, is well known for his mature, serious manga about adults and for adults. No face faults, no nosebleeds, no fan service, no goofy stuff. So he decided to adapt an Osamu Tezuka Astro Boy story. Not just that, he decided to adapt one of the most famous Astro Boy plot lines, The Greatest Robot on Earth, one that involves, for example, aerial fights between robots. The result is Pluto, an eight-volume manga about life in a world of ubiquitous androids, where the role of human labor is changing, and society is grappling with that change. Instead of a shonen action tale, Pluto is a sobering examination of what it means to be human. It's very hard to talk about Pluto without spoiling its plot, because the manga's power comes from the themes that develop from its story, and the characters themselves are introduced slowly over the course of the manga's eight volumes. This is itself something distinctive about Pluto. Instead of throwing the entire cast and premise at you in the first hundred pages, as so many manga do, the characters drip in over time naturally as they're needed. I think I can safely say that the story is initially structured as a mystery, with an android detective investigating recent murders of both humans and robots. This gives Urasawa a detached point of view character who's not Astro, who can produce with or can proceed with an international investigation without the oddity of a child robot quizzing adults about murder. And that's a great example of how smart Urasawa is with Pluto. He understood the limitations of the original story, they, all stories have limitations, and invented new situations to make it work with a more adult cast and tone. It also points to one of the great things about Pluto. It's not simply an adaptation of The Greatest Robot on Earth with new character designs and panel layouts. It expands that story. Using the distance of decades and more time spent planning to deepen its complexity and add more symbolism and metaphor. Pluto is sophisticated to an extent that Astro Boy simply could not be when Tezuka faced weekly deadlines and was writing the story from scratch. This is also helped by Urasawa's distinctive style. Instead of Tezuka's charming but ultimately childlike rounded characters, Urasawa's character designs are closer to those of European and American comic artists like Mobius. His style helps Urasawa work in sly references that also help the reader understand the characters. Astro has always had a complicated relationship with his father, Dr. Tenma, a hard-driving man with unrealistic expectations of his son. This relationship has been echoed down the halls of manga and anime in many other complicated father-son relationships. And in Pluto, it comes full circle. Dr. Tenma looks suspiciously like Gendo Ikari from Neon Genesis Evangelion. This is not just a nerdy nod, however. A lot of Pluto's readers have never read the original Astro Boy story on which it's based, even readers in Japan. They're far more likely to be familiar with Evangelion, so by referencing it, Urasawa creates a shortcut in the viewer's mind to quickly understand the personality of Astro's creator. Now, if there's a flaw in Pluto, and I'm not saying there is, it's that it can feel a little too ambitious. It touches on so many themes which it simply does not have the time or space to flesh out. That can feel unsatisfying if you expect it to turn into a grand unified theory of humanity. It shares similarities with Akira and Evangelion in that way. But that's not what it's trying to do. As an eight-volume adaptation of an Astro Boy plotline, it's hard not to be impressed by Pluto's scope and maturity. It never feels cheap or simple, and you never feel like Urasawa is restricted by his source material. Instead, he made a new work of art, and one that deserves to be remembered as one of his masterpieces.